What's up there, Success Evolutionaries? Have you ever felt like you're pushing a massive boulder uphill while trying to get someone to see things your way? Well, fear not, because today we're all about persuading and influencing. It's Dr. Josh here, and today we're going to dive deep in the art of persuasion and influence and how you can master it. No more pushing boulders uphill. Let's get them rolling down the other side. But first, don't forget to hit the like button if you're ready to become a master influencer. Persuasion and influence. Now they might seem like big imposing words, but we use these skills every day. When you convince your friend to try out that new sushi place, or when kids get you to buy them ice cream, or when you negotiate a deal at work, you are using persuasion. You are using influence. So what exactly are these two concepts? Well, persuasion is the art of getting someone to do something by convincing them of its merits. While influence, on the other hand, is a bit more subtle. It is about guiding others, guiding their actions, guiding their attitudes, without necessarily making a direct request to them. You see, persuasion and influence are not about control or deception. They're about understanding people, what drives them, and how you can help align their motivations with your goals. Now, it is essential to clarify that there is a world of difference between ethical persuasion and manipulation. Now, ethical persuasion is about creating win-win situations where you propose something that not only benefits you, but also provides value to the other party. While on the other hand, manipulation is about using sneaky tactics to get someone to do something against their interest for you. It's not about creating mutual value. It's about exploiting others for your own personal gain. That's not what we're all about. Remember, as success evolutionaries, we are committed to achieving success ethically. We believe in fostering trust and building relationships that are lasting. So let's ditch the manipulation and embrace the ethical part of this whole thing. We care about ethical persuasion. That's what we want to learn. Because trust me, guilt tripping somebody into passing you the salt at a dinner table, that's just bad taste now. Okay, now that we understand the basics, let's talk about the five key principles of influence. The big five, the key principles of influence that govern our everyday interactions. They were initially introduced by Dr. Robert Caldini, the renowned psychologist, and let me tell you, they're game changers. The first, reciprocity. The principle of reciprocity is simple. When someone does something nice for us, we naturally want to do something nice for them as well, returning the favor. It is the you scratch my back, I scratch yours principle. For example, if you want a friend to help you move, you can offer to help them with something they would appreciate. Second principle is scarcity. People are naturally drawn to things that are exclusive or rare. Limited time only offers, exclusive offers. Does that sound familiar? If you're trying to persuade someone, highlighting the unique benefits or exclusive nature of what you're proposing can be incredibly effective. Authority. People respect authority. They're more likely to listen to someone who's a professional or a leader in their field. So if you want to be more persuasive, demonstrate your knowledge and expertise. Consistency. People like to be consistent. Once they commit to something, they're more likely to follow through. This is why getting a small yes can lead to much bigger yeses. Liking. This is last but not least. People are more likely to be influenced by people they like. It sounds obvious, right? But it's often overlooked. Be personable, be genuine, be friendly, and you will become a whole lot more persuasive. And there you have it, the five key principles of influence. Once you start implementing them consciously, you will notice a huge difference. But remember now, with great power comes great responsibility. So use them wisely. All right, let's really get under the hood of these principles. So buckle up. It's about to get very psychological. Reciprocity. This principle operates on a give and take basis. It's like when your neighbor brings you an apple pie and all of a sudden you feel the need to return the favor. You want to give them a cherry pie or you want to give them chocolate cake or heck, even a whole Thanksgiving dinner. But in a more professional scenario, say you offer someone useful advice to a, say, a colleague, for example, right? And later on, when you need a favor, they're more likely to help you out. They feel like they owe you one. And that, my friends, is reciprocity. Now, scarcity. Ever notice how you only want what you can't have? It's like your brain's own version of a limited time offer. So when you're trying to persuade someone, scarcity can be your best friend. Say you're negotiating a deal. Emphasizing your offer is exclusive or it's only 
going for a limited time can make it seem a whole lot more attractive. It's the get it before it's gone principle. But remember, no creating, no fake scarcity. That's just bad karma. Authority. Now, people are more likely to follow advice from an expert, right? This is why toothpaste ads always have a dentist in them. It's not just because they have fantastic teeth. When you demonstrate your expertise and credibility, people naturally pay more attention to you. They want to hear what you have to say. So if you're trying to persuade someone, show them that you know your stuff. Show up in a lab coat if you have to. Now consistency. This principle is all about our desire to be consistent in our words and actions. It's like when you tell your friends you're going to start going to the gym and you actually have to do it because you've said it. In persuasion, getting a small commitment first can lead to much bigger commitments later. It's the let me just dip my toes in that becomes a cannonball dive. Now liking. Now, finally, we have the principle of liking. People are a lot more likely to say yes to people they feel like they like. So be friendly, be genuine, connect with people on a personal level. And you can't charm everyone with your dashing good looks, but a warm smile and a friendly demeanor will go a long way. Now it's all well and good to know the principles, right? But how do we put them into action? Let's get practical with these strategies to enhance your persuasive skills. Know your audience, just like a comedian tailoring their jokes to the crowd. Successful persuasion involves understanding your audience. Research their interests, research their concerns, what motivates them. This will help you craft a persuasive message that resonates with them. Communicate clearly. Have you ever tried persuading someone in a language they don't understand? Good luck. It doesn't work too well, right? Communication is key in persuasion. We have to be clear, very concise, and very direct in our communication style. Nobody was ever persuaded by a rambling mess of words. Now listen actively. Persuasion isn't a monologue. It's a dialogue. Listen to the other person's views. Listen to their concerns. This shows respect and makes them more receptive to your ideas. Have you ever heard the saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care? Show empathy, understand their perspective, and they will be a whole lot more likely to see yours. Now we have to be persistent. Persuasion is not an instant magic spell. It takes time and patience. So stay persistent keep presenting your case, and eventually you may sway your opinion your way. All right, moving on, you'd be surprised how much you say without saying a word. Let's talk about the power of nonverbal communication. Body language, the way you stand, the way you move, it all sends a message. Confident, open body language can make you more persuasive. Facial expressions are crucial as well. Have you ever tried to hide your dislike for Aunt Martha's special casserole? Yeah, your face gave it all away, didn't it? Your expressions can convey authenticity and emotion, enhancing your persuasive appeal. Now, eye contact. Looking someone in the eye can show sincerity and confidence. But remember, there's a fine line between engaging in eye contact and a creepy stare. Tone of voice. Imagine trying to inspire a crowd in a monotone voice. Not too persuasive, right? Your tone can add emotion and urgency to your message, making it a whole lot more persuasive. And there you have it, success evolutionaries. Today we've uncovered the power of persuasion and influence. We've laid out the ethical part and explore strategies to enhance your persuasive skills. And with these tools at your disposal, you're ready to become a master influencer. Remember to keep practicing these skills, refining and honing them, and do not ever underestimate the power of a good persuasion strategy. As always, if you found this video helpful and useful, give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody who you think could benefit from it. And if you are new on here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join our Success Evolutionaries community. Up next, we're going to venture into a subject that often leaves us tongue-tied, having difficult conversations. So stay tuned, Success Evolutionaries. The journey to self-improvement continues, guys. This is Dr. Josh signing off. Remember, you have the power to be persuasive and to communicate expertly.